population and abundant natural scenery. There are plateaus, forest-covered mountains, lakes, and a long coastline. This diversified geographical environment, along with its various climate zones, provides conditions for the reproduction and survival of many different species. No other country in the world has as many potential food sources as China. All year round, people collect these gifts from nature. Let's take a look at some of these people. Shanri La in Yunnan province is surrounded by jungle and snowy mountains. During the rainy season, the weather is cool. Keeping up with Danjing Duoma through the pine and oak trees isn't easy. Duoma and her mother are collecting precious pine mushrooms. These are found only in high altitude, unpolluted areas. The top of this one has already opened, so it's no good. Pine mushrooms are an edible variety of wild mushrooms. In urban restaurants, a dish of charcoal baked pine mushrooms costs as much as 1,600 yuan. Pine mushrooms have a heavy fragrance that grows stronger after roasting. This is why city people regard them as a treasure. At three o'clock in the morning, all the people in GD village set out to collect pine mushrooms. The mother and daughter walk 20 kilometers to reach the jungle. All the mushroom hunters depend on luck to find mushrooms. The best quality mushrooms are found underground. The mother is looking for the mushrooms she buried two days ago. The new mushrooms growing in the sandy soil are too small because of insufficient rainfall. One popular local dish is made of pine mushrooms fried in butter. The butter is melted in a black ceramic pot before the sliced pine mushrooms are added. The heat quickly removes the moisture from the mushrooms, which release a strong, fragrant smell. Most high-end foodstuffs only require such simple preparation. Tibetans formally rejected them because of their strange smell, and so the price of pine mushrooms used to be very low. But in recent years, the price has skyrocketed. A herder's family 
can now earn over 10,000 yuan during the summer rainy season. Prices vary according to the quality grade. Vine mushrooms remain fresh for only three days in nature, so dealers process them as quickly as possible. The purchase price for mushrooms like these is 80 yuan a piece. Six hours later, it will sell for the equivalent of 700 yuan in the supermarkets of Tokyo. Juoma is worried that her mushrooms are not very good. Her mother walked 11 hours through the mountains to sell their mushrooms yesterday, but they received very little for their effort. The rainy season only lasts a month, after which the mushrooms disappear. Dwarma and her mother hope they do better tomorrow. two seasons in Yunnan province, the dry season and the rainy season. November marks the start of six months of warm, dry wind. At the end of May, the rainy season begins, and this is when mushrooms quickly emerge in the jungle. Dwarma and her mother only collect pine mushrooms, and it's an arduous and time-consuming task. depend on luck for a good harvest. After Juoma picks a mushroom, she carefully covers the hole with pine needles so that the mushroom can continue to grow. All the villagers observe this rule. Mushrooms only became popular three decades ago. The main ingredient for another traditional Chinese dish popular in Jiangsu and Zhejiang, deep fried winter bamboo shoot slices, is also found in mountain woods. Many Chinese people live near bamboo groves and understand bamboo shoots very well. Bao Genji is a Zhejiang native. The largest winter bamboo shoot ever found in Suichang County was found in his bamboo grove. Winter bamboo shoots hide under a layer of soil. Bao Genji locates them by examining the tips of the bamboo stalks. Winter bamboo shoots only grow within a certain period. 
The edible part of a bamboo shoot is very small after the outer part is removed. Chinese cooks love it because its taste goes well with many other ingredients. It tastes even better when cooked with fatty meat. Bao Genji looks for the shoots of bamboo stalks about four years old. He carefully digs out the shoot and then covers it with dirt. Bamboo shoots buried in damp dirt can remain fresh for two weeks. Fifteen hundred miles to the southwest lies Liaozhou in the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, where it's summertime. Ah Liang is a native of the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, and he grows large-headed sweet bamboo shoots. When bamboo shoots grow out of the soil, they quickly harden and become bitter and tough. Alia grows whip bamboo shoots, which are harvested in the summer. Summer bamboo shoots are not as tender and tasty as winter bamboo shoots, and they're used for making pickled bamboo shoots, a Liu Zhou specialty. A popular Guangxi dish is made by stir-frying small croakers and then adding soybeans and pickled bamboo shoots. It makes a very good appetizer. Snail noodles is a local Liaozhou snack whose main ingredient is pickled bamboo shoots. The sweet bamboo shoots in Ah Liang's house have been out of the soil for nearly two hours and have reached their peak. In four hours, the bamboo shoots in these two baskets will turn soft and crumbly, so Ah Liang's family needs to work fast. Ah Liang checks the jars of pickled bamboo shoots at night before he goes to sleep. He checks the colour and discovers they need to ferment another three days. His son tells him that someone wants to buy them the next day, but he has to turn down the order. Bao Genji is cooking some bamboo shoot soup at home. He stir fries equal amounts of salted pork and winter bamboo shoots in the wok. He then pours in some broth and lets it simmer. The salty flavor of the pork and the refreshing flavor of the bamboo shoots combine. Spring bamboo shoots are generally preferred but Bao Genji uses winter bamboo shoots because he can get them in his own bamboo grove. The price of winter bamboo shoots is 20 times as high as for spring bamboo shoots. By next season, the spring bamboo shoots will be ready for harvest and he will use them to make salted pork and bamboo shoot soup. Sometimes the condiments can also be nature's gift. There are many natural salt wells in the crimson sandstone Nordung Mountains in northern Dali, Yunnan. Local people use the salt to make blood sausages. The sausages 
only take a week to prepare. Lao Huang and his son, Huang Shujiang, are building a stove by a small river to produce salt, which they do every year. This salt well in Nuodang village is over 1,000 years old. Lao Huang and his son use the salt to make a local delicacy. can tell when the Nordung hams are ready. When the temperature rises at noon, salt seeps from the soil around the salt well, attracting livestock. Wang Shujiang has been boiling brine for over four hours, and crystals are beginning to form. Nordung salt has a high potassium content, so it tastes less salty. It is the best salt for making ham, and the amount of salt is determined by the volume of the mold. Salt was once the most important commodity in Nordung. It is winter in Yuanlong County.
hard salt as a special gift from nature. The river valley at an altitude of 1,800 meters is getting warmer and wetter with the change in season. Over 1,000 hams are beginning to mold on their way to perfection. It is now October. This lake near the Yangtze River in Hubei province shrinks during this season, giving people a chance to see what is on the bottom. Brothers Shangwu and Mao Rong are going to Jiayu County, Hubei, to dig up lotus roots from the lake bed. However, digging them out is not easy. In the shallow waters of China, lotus roots are abundant. Patience and skill are needed to get a lotus root out intact. You first have to determine the direction it's growing and how long it is, and then gradually remove the silt. Broken lotus roots are worth less and even still less if silt gets into the holes. Hubei province is a major producer of lotus roots, which have a high starch content. One way of preparing the roots is to scrape the skin off, cut slits in them, stuff the slits with ground pork, coat them in batter, and then saute until golden yellow. Lotus roots are a natural product that requires manual labor to harvest, making production overheads higher than for other vegetables. Lotus roots must be dug out by hand, no matter how large the lotus roots
。我们肯定希望他跟我的价钱卖得高啊，所以就是为了生活，多挣几个钱。Lotus root diggers love the cold weather. This is because lotus roots sell well when it's cold. The locals often make soup with them. People in the Wuhan area like to eat stewed spare ribs with lotus roots. In fact, Almost all Hubei families have this dish once or twice a month. To prepare the dish, thick spare ribs are cut into pieces and boiled in a ceramic pot. When the meat is almost done, the fresh lotus roots are added to the broth. The dish is brought to a boil over a high flame and then simmered for half an hour. It takes five months to get all the lotus roots from Treasure Lake, with hundreds of professional diggers working from dawn to dusk. This process takes place every year in freshwater lakes all over China. Several months later, the fishing season begins at Chagan Lake in Jilin Province, several thousand kilometers north. The freshwater lakes on the Golos grassland, with its dry air and sub-zero temperatures, are all frozen solid. But under the ice, there are many fish. Kitchen of a Beijing restaurant. The cooks are preparing tortillas in fish head soup, a restaurant specialty. These big fish heads come from far away northeast China, and they are boiled rather than fried. Bite-sized pieces of freshly made Chinese tortillas are thrown in the pot before the soup is thickened over a high flame. Eating fish heads is uniquely Chinese, and good fish heads cost more than the rest of the fish. Fishermen arrive on Chagan Lake at four in the morning. Wearing cotton socks, felt boots, and dogskin hats. They're most afraid of cracks in the ice, which can even prove to be deadly for both men and horses. As they walk on the ice for hours, they keep their fingers crossed. On this bright and sunny day, the water under the ice has a high oxygen content because of the low temperature. Many fishermen will quickly put their nets into the water, where the cold causes the fish to gather in slow-moving groups. They must pick a good location, however, or they won't catch any fish. Bad luck on the first try with the net can portend a long stretch of bad luck.
The fishermen work in silence, and the atmosphere is tense. Moreover, their heavy clothes make even simple movements difficult. The fishermen are all hoping that their hard work will be rewarded with a good catch. Shu Bao Zhu, 77, is a famous and experienced fisherman who can locate the fish accurately. The fisherman fix the capstan on the ice and wind the cable around it to pull the fishing net. And the net may be as long as two kilometers. Clear day like this, the net can be seen moving under the ice. The fishermen hold a traditional ceremony for the coming Chinese New Year. The ceremony has been made more elaborate due to the growing tourist demand and commercial concerns. Xu Baozhu is one of the main performers. The ceremony has changed greatly in recent years, but he still goes on stage to pray to the spirit of the lake for a good harvest. The net has been moving under the ice for eight hours, so the fishermen reel it in. The net has traversed the entire bottom of the lake. As people watch the net, they don't notice that all the fish weigh at least two kilograms. Strict local regulations require that the net have a mesh of at least 20 centimeters, which only traps fish five years old or older. Underage fish easily escape. Moreover, the Mongolians on the Gorlos grasslands believe you should always leave some behind. At Shi Bao Zhu's house, his family is preparing a fish dinner for the eve of the Chinese New Year. Shi Bao Zhu's son-in-law is preparing 14 dishes, and all of them feature fish. 
One dish is fish in miso, a specialty of northeast China. First, he stews several variegated carp heads, and then he adds several different kinds of fish. This dish reflects the straightforward personality of the local people. Zhu Baozhu's children all toast him. The evening air in the fishing village by Chagan Lake is filled with the aroma of cooked fish. This lake provides sustenance for the people living around it. However, for many Chinese people, the sea is even more important. In ancient times, people of the Jing ethnic group caught fish and shrimps while on stilts. Fish come to the shore of these islands in the early morning or at sunset when the southwesterly monsoon arrives. In the past, people spread their nets to catch the fish and shrimp that came near the shore. Today, people only do this to entertain tourists. These five men from one way village are the last people who have this skill. The deep water is more tempting for those living near the sea, but the sea becomes more dangerous the farther you go from shore. Before they set off, the fishermen always go to a Mazu temple to offer a sacrifice. Lin Hongqi is the captain of an ocean-going fishing boat. It's winter, and Captain Lean has prepared fuel, food, and fresh water for the trip. His boat, with its crew of 20, will set off from San Ya. Most of the crew are young men. The number of fish has been going down, and Captain Lean is worried. Nature is not always generous. At dusk, the captain catches a wolf fish. He prepares it boils it in plain water and eats it with a bowl of instant noodles for his supper. Before he finishes eating, a school of fish is attracted by the ship's lights.
After two hours in the water, however, only jellyfish are caught in the net. This is not unusual, but the captain is under a great deal of pressure. If he cannot catch any fish in the next few weeks, he will have some explaining to do to his crew. The crew has brought some salted Spanish mackerel to eat while at sea because it keeps well for a long time. The fish heads and tails with sauerkraut make a delicious soup. The South China Sea is China's largest and deepest. Red snails are good, simply boiled in seawater. When the weather's bad, fishermen simply take a day off. However, Lin Hongqi has gone to sea twice since the fishing season began, and he's already lost several hundred thousand yuan. His boat has now been at sea for several days, and he's not caught any fish at all. The pressure is mounting. The fishermen depend on their captain to find the fish. With each passing day, the fishermen become more anxious. They know they can only find fish at sea for six months a year. A good catch is traditionally celebrated with a sumptuous luncheon featuring only fish dishes. One is fried Spanish mackerel with simple flavoring. Others include braised pond fish with garlic and cannonball fish soup with pickled bamboo shoots. These are dishes that retain the flavor of the sea.
Captain Lean takes his fully loaded boat back home, but he will have to set out again if the weather allows. Duoma and her mother are satisfied with the 5,000 yuan they earned during the two-month season. At dusk, Shang Wu takes his boat back to shore. He covers his harvest of lotus roots with a tarpaulin. On the first day after the Chinese New Year, Xie Baozhu walks on the ice alone. Next spring, 250 tons of minnows will be released into the lake. Xie hopes that next year's haul will be better. As we enjoy these gifts from nature, we should be grateful to those who work to obtain the ingredients for us.